All right, we're going to do a little bit of uh, GIMP work today to customize these buttons down here. Okay. First of all, I'm going to go, do we name these buttons? No. This is uh, BTN reset. That's the reset button. This button over here is called BTN voice. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete the names, the text that appears on it. And they're going to go away for just a little bit. Okay. Now, we have to understand this, that um, my screen is 300 by 400. You guys with me on this? So how big do we want these buttons to be? If they split the screen in half, they would be 150 long. Are you guys with me on that? So I'm probably going to make this button like 60 by 100. All right, so I'm going to go into GIMP. Did I start my video? Okay, yes, I did. I'm into GIMP. And we're going to make a customized voice button. Well, we don't need to customize the voice button. But we'll I'll show you how to I'll just show you how to do one of these then. Okay? So I'm going to go new. Immediately then I'm going to say, "Okay, I want this to be 100 pixels long by 60 pixels high." And it's going to go immediately give my box. Okay? That's my button. So I go ahead and get my Windows tools out, my new toolbox, and I love the gradient tool. Okay, if you guys double click on the gradient tool, you guys can go in here. Now, if you go back to my, I'm dealing with like greens and browns and kind of earth tone colors here. You guys with me on this? Okay, you guys can customize this button to be any color that you want. So watch this. Jump. Like here's that earth tone right here. If I drag that, boom, see how I get earth tones in there? Okay, if you want another, there's more greens in here. If you scroll down, there's another green and blue. Let's get one that looks like more of a forest color. There's a foresty, there's your greens right there. Control Z. Now I go like this. Okay, that's a nice little green button there. You see it? And if you don't like that, then you can go linear, you can go swirl. So watch this swirl. There's a swirl. There's a swirl. You guys with me on that? So I like that one. It's kind of cool. And now I just go get a text tool. That's that big capital A. And I'm going to drag a text on this. So I drag a box. I start at the top left. I drag down to the bottom right. And I'm going to type in reset. Okay. And I'm going to go over here to my tools, and there's right justify, there's center. And then I really don't know a way of uh, aligning this vertically. So here's what I do vertically. I go do some mouse work, and I click on this guy up here. Let me see. i got to drag this guy back out. Okay, there it is. And then i got to drag this one down. There it is. And then I just move this guy down until that looks like it's centered vertically. Do you guys see that? Okay. I don't like the white or the black. So I can make this bold. I can make it italics. And I can make it white. And there it is. There's my button. All right. So I, get, I go ahead and hit File, Export As. And I'll just call this reset, period one, dot JPG. I always go with JPGs unless I'm dealing with transparencies because they, they take up less memory. I made a basketball app, and I had like 20, 30 buttons on it, and I made all my buttons in GIMP just like this. So now I go back to my app, and I go to my reset button. I go to image. Upload an image, choose a file, and let's go get my reset button. And that reset button did not save in here. So the question is, is where is the reset button? Might be in sound decision. 
Not in there. How about see through? Not in there. Okay, let's go back to GIMP. GIMP. File. Export as. Where is it? Oh, it's in documents. So I need to go into first name, last name, sprite smash, export, export. There you go. Boom. Go back, click on my reset button, add an image, upload, choose a file. There's my reset button. Hit OK. There's my reset button. You guys see what I did there? That's how I put my reset button into my image. Now, what I may want to do also is go ahead and go to screen one and upload this uh, spring forest background into this screen also. There you go. And now it'll look like these trees are running together. And now these high scores, you may want to add some color up here. So how about some nice yellows, high score, maybe a white, and time. How about maybe an orange? All right, so there's some earth tone colors, and now I'm ready. And now if I go to this button down here, I can just go 60 by 60. And I can make it oval. And um, I can go get a voice icon. And there they are. There's a nice one. View image. Save image as. Save it. Go back to MIT. Upload that image. Upload. Choose a file. Voice button. And there it is. So we're looking pretty good there. Okay, so that's how you do a custom buttons. And now I'm ready to put in some code. Do we have our non-visible components? I don't think we do. We need our non-visible components. So let's go to media. And we need a player. We need a sound. We need a clock. Clocks are in sensor. And we need speech recognizer. I'm going to put in an accelerometer. And I'm also going to put in media. I'm going to put in a speech recognizer. And I'm also going to put in my favorite Siri text-to-speech. Okay, did you guys get the non-visible components? What they say? All right, so we're ready to go ahead and start getting the squirrel to move around the screen. Okay. So what we need to do right now is click on our canvas. And I need to figure out how tall our canvas is. Well, we know how wide the canvas is. How wide is the canvas? It's 300. How do you know it's 300? Yeah, the width of the entire screen is 300. My canvas is stretching all the way across the width. Hence, therefore, deductively, the width of the canvas is 300. How tall is it? I don't know how tall it is. Do you? I just know it's not 400. Okay? If I could figure out this width right here. Well, I do know this is 60, right? We made this button 60. And this looks to be about 20. So I'm guessing this is 80. So 60 and 20 is 80. So if I take 60 and 20 off of if I take 80 off of 400, I'm looking like 320. So this 
Let me go click on my canvas. Okay. We could set it. Let's go set the height for a second. And set the height to 320 and see what happens. What did it do? Did it do much? I don't think it did much. So let's go back to Phil Parent and see what happens. Didn't do much. Are you with me? So I'm guessing it's somewhere around 320. Okay. So it's important that we understand that this screen is 300 wide by 320 down. Because we're going to randomly pick a number between when we pick X and Y coordinates. Okay. We have to pick an X and Y coordinate that is inside of that range of 300 to 320. Okay. Now, we need to stop right here and I need to go to the board and I need to explain something. Um, all right, so now we got to get Smiley or our Swirl to move around the screen. So we have to start our clock and we have to multiply. Okay, so here we go, blocks. I'm going to go to screen one and initialize the screen. That's when the screen loads up onto your uh, phone or your tablet. The initialization phase is when the screen comes up. When the screen pops up, I want to say, hey, clock one, I want you to start. So I'm going to set the clock timer enabled to logic true. Okay. And now what we also want to do is we want to set the interval of the clock. Interval of the clock. Set the clock timer interval. Okay. Um, Gage, can you do me a favor? Can you go to that board back there? On that board, yeah, on that white board right there, there's a marker right there, Gage, to the left. Would you write down there that one thousand milliseconds equals one second anywhere on that board pretty big put across the bottom pretty big one thousand milliseconds equals one second you have to know that as a programmer okay one thousand milliseconds is equal to one second of time so how, how fast do you want your mole to move around the screen? Should we make it one second? 1,001, click. 1,002, click. That's not a very fun game. Right? So you're going to have to play with this number right here. I would probably start it at 500. That's a half a second. And that's still pretty slow. I'm going to tell you right now, that's still pretty slow. You're going to probably hit that about three or four times before it moves. Click, 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 click. Boop, moving. Click, 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 moving. You know, so you're going to have to play with this number. Maybe 250, maybe 200, maybe 100. And then if you guys want to have levels in your game, what do you do? If you want to make your game start out easy, and then you want your game to get harder and harder and harder and harder and harder, what could you do to your time interval? Just change your time interval, lower it. Maybe you start out at 500, next time it's 400, next time it's 300, next time it's 200. All right. So then we're going to say to our clock, when the clock is firing, when the clock dot one is timing, when it's running, when it's running, what do we want to do with our sprite? We want to move the sprites X and Y location, right? And I want it to be random. So I'm going to go to my image sprite. And I'm going to set its X and Y. I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate this and I'm going to set its Y. 
Okay. Did you guys notice you could also set the Z? The Z is how far back and forward it is. You can make it come out and go back. So does everybody see what I'm doing? I'm going to randomly set its XY coordinates. What am I going to set it to? Whack-a-mole is random, right? Who knows that whack-a-mole is random? It just kind of pops up in random different places. So I want to go to my math, and I want to get a random number. And I'm going to have to do some math here. And remember, we have to subtract. All right, so look at your engineering design paper, or you can look at the whiteboard back in the back. What's the highest number I want to go to on the width for the X's? X's are going left and right, right? So what's the highest number I can go to on the width? Look at your engineering design paper. What, what did we say the width of the screen was? 300. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to pick a number, roll the dice. I want a number between 1 and 300. But I need to subtract off. I can't let it go to 300. So I need to subtract off what? The width of the image. So I'm going to go to my image sprite. And I'm going to subtract off its width. There it is. See the width? I'm going to duplicate this. And on this one here, since I don't know the width of it, okay, I'm going to get rid of this 300 here. And we don't know the height of it, right? But we know that the canvas has a height. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to CNB canvas height. There it is. There's my height. Minus the image sprite height. Okay. It's important you guys understand what I'm doing there. Do you guys see what I did? I don't know the exact height of the screen. So I'm going to say, okay, variable, whatever height that is, go figure it out. And get some random number between one and the height of the screen, the canvas. You guys with me on that? Actually, we could put width of the screen in here, too. Do you guys want to do that? Duplicate this. And that would be uh, width. So if I want to do that, I could. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. If I, if I do this right, my swirl, swirl, my swirl should be moving around the screen. Scan in the QR code. All my images, if your images don't go through the first time, then I would encourage you just to go ahead and hit connect, reset, and then just reset the connection one more time. I've noticed that wirelessly, the large images don't go through all the time. And that's just from a usability study. And there's my squirrel. Okay. Unfortunately, my background image didn't show up yet. Are you with me? But is that seeming to be working right? Is that working right? Yeah. So that, that algorithm right there is working. 
What about that speed? Is that fast enough? Too fast? Let's see how many times I can... That's pretty quick. That's not bad. That's a half a second right there. So that swirl is moving twice in a second. How many milliseconds are in a second? A thousand. So if I make it 500, that is a half a second. By the way, that's a test question, folks. If a thousand milliseconds is one second, what's a half a second? How many is a half a second? 500. You got to know that. It's a test question. Okay. All right. So what do we want to do now? The squirrel, the swirl, the swirl, the horse squirrel, the swirl, the swirl is moving. So what do we need to do now? Play the game in your head. What would happen? How do you play whack-a-mole? Yeah, you got to hit it with a hammer. Are we going to have a hammer in this game? No. What's going to be our hammer? Your finger. So if our finger touches the swirl, you guys got to be able to say that in your head. Is that too hard to think that way? You guys have to act out the game and, and just act like you're playing it. Okay, how am I going to get points here? Okay, you're going to get points when your finger touches the squirrel. So now I can pro I can program that because now I can go to my image sprite and say when the image sprite is touched. Are you with me? What's going to touch it? My hammer or my hammer is my finger. When my image sprite touches the squirrel, what is going to happen? What? It's always going to move. It's going to keep moving. But what happens when my finger touches it? What should happen in the game if my finger touches the squirrel? What happens when your hammer hits the whack-a-mole in whack-a-mole? You get points. You guys with me on this? So we have to get points when we touch the squirrel. I also want to play a sound. Okay. So right now I need the sound of a squirrel. Does anyone know the sound of a barking squirrel? Okay. So let me go to the internet. And I can go to freesound.org. So you go to free sound, here it is, and let's type in squirrel. I spell squirrel, e two R's. Oh, here you go, squirrel run. That was a squirrel run. Didn't like it. How about squirrel, oh, bite. How about a squirrel bark? Can you guys hear that one? That's a good one. That's the one I want. Can you guys hear this? Or is it, am I the only one hearing this? Okay, this is the one I want right here. So this is I love that. That's great. So uh, I forget how you do this. I think you have to go. Yeah, here you go. Download. So there's my song right there. And I'll go show in folder. And there it is. There's my squirrel short. I'm going to copy that. You guys, if you want to be a part of uh, uh, freesound.org, all you have to do, I think you sign up. You register with an email. It doesn't cost you anything, but they do want an email. Uh, they might send you promotions or stuff. So just you don't have to buy anything. I I never buy anything. Um, documents, um, first name, last name, Sprite Smash, 
paste my squirrel sound. Okay. So now what I might want to do is edit the squirrel sound with Audacity. So now you go into Audacity and you hit open. And then I'm going to go back to my libraries, documents, first name, last name, sprite smash, squirrel. Open my squirrel sound. And now I'm playing the squirrel sound in Audacity. I like that one right there. Do you guys like that one right there? I like this one right here. So that's what's going to happen every time you touch the squirrel. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to go File, Export. And this is uh, Squirrel Bark. Squirrel Bark. Okay, I hit save. I'm not going to go through all that right now because I'm taking time. And now, have I showed you guys how to upload a sound to a sound file? Let's go back to our designer. Do we have a sound in here? Okay, so let's rename this sound SND Squirrel Bark. Squirrel Bark. And then I go to Source. And I hit upload. It's just like an image. Um, you go back in here and we find mine. Um, I, I export it to the wrong place. So export. Let me put it in the right place. Um, I need to go back to the first name, last name, sprite. There it is. And I'll, I'm going to have to go squirrel bark. Squirrel bark. Save. Okay. Now I go back into my folder. I go back into MIT. I might have to reload this. Let's see if it's in there now. There it is. So I hit cancel. I upload. I choose a file. Five minutes left. Squirrel bark. Hit OK. And then I go into my blocks. And when I touch the squirrel, what do I want to happen? I want the squirrel to bark, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go to sound, and I want it to play my squirrel bark sound. Okay? The next thing I want to do, and I'll start to show you this because I do have enough time, we want to create a variable. What do we want to remember in this game? Okay? So your variables should remember the things you want to remember in the game. I want to remember score, and I want to remember high score. Okay? So I'm going to create a variable called score, and I'm going to set it to zero. And I'm going to duplicate this, and then this one down here is going to be called high score. Okay? And... And then here, all I do is I do some math. So I'm going to say, okay, set every time you every time you hit the squirrel, I'm going to say, okay, set my score to, let's do some math, and you're going to say this is going to be my score plus one. Okay, and then every time you set the score, you need to show it. All right, so we're going to have to go to our label, LBL score, and you're going to set the text of your score, and here you're going to join, you're going to have to do a join, and we need text here, and remember that our, our label said score colon space and then down here, then you're just going to put the global variable back in there. So go ahead and get my global score. All right, so I'm going to add one to my score. Every time I touch it, the squirrel should bark. I should see one adding on to my score, and the squirrel should be barking. So let's go ahead and reconnect this, see if it works before we leave. Okay, AI companion. Let's see how the squirrel does.
Oh, there's my background filing. That looks nice. Okay, I know why it didn't work because I didn't reload it. I have to rescan it in to get my sound. My sound file wasn't in last time. Okay. There it is. There you go. You can tell when I hit it, right? That's funny. That's really funny. Okay, so you can see my score is at five. Everybody see my score? Score is at five. I hit it five times. That's how you program. You see how it's just one little thinking thing at a time? Get your squirrel to move. All right, then what happens next? Well, then I want to touch the squirrel. Well, what happens when I touch the squirrel? Well, I get points. And I could also play a sound to let me know audibly that I hit the squirrel. Okay? All right. And tomorrow we'll just keep breaking this down one little piece at a time. Okay? How many people got this today? Thumbs up. Is it that hard? You have to make yourself think in little blocks, little pieces of the puzzle. Don't try to put the puzzle all together at one time. If I gave you a puzzle today with a million pieces in it, could you put a million pieces together at one time? Can't happen. Same thing with programming. You just put one little piece of the puzzle in at a time. And if you put enough pieces of the puzzle together, your puzzle is going to get done. Okay. Was it too hard to think about the screen, the upside down coordinate plane? No, not really. Once you get it, it's just it's just the way it is. All right. I think I kept you a minute the other day too long, so you're out the door with more. See ya. Have a good day. I'll upload this video for you. Bye.